what's up? This is Adam Armstrong from Rebel Inc. And you're listening to Dangerous Conversation on RadioIO.com. You'll hear that guy. And who knows, maybe the whole band tomorrow on the show. On Tuesday's American Rehab. Dangerous Conversation, Bob Army Radio, RadioIO.com, in studio. The one and only crew, actually uh, most, or half the crew, from 1787 Radio, uh, Alex Snicker. And, uh, you know, you notice how I just kind of turned to you, Danielle. <laughs> how you doing? Good to see you. Well, I'm next to you this time. Normally, I'm across. I know. You have, like, some angel lighting over your head over in the studio here, too. So, you're, very, you're looking very angelic. Good to see you. What's up, Snicker? <laughs> I don't think she's that angelic with that shirt on, but that's Good. okay. Yeah. Well, my kind of angel. <laughs> and we have an angel on the line too, Angel Clark. Uh, angel, welcome back. Thanks for waiting through the uh, the break. Normally, we don't dial people up to about three ten the way our schedule runs, but uh, you are you get an A plus for being prompt anyway. Well, you know, uh, I I tend to uh, I I guess my my commercial breaks are are on a different uh, time schedule than yours. So, and I'm I'm always like to the minute when it comes to it because you've only got a certain amount of time to get the person on before you go live. Absolutely. I know uh, you usually do something at what, five after the top of the hour, the moment you start your show. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we go live at, uh, at, at six after. You go bottom of the hour next? Uh, well, actually, uh, we, we then do uh, five sixteen and then come back at 520, another one at 529. So we've actually got uh, four commercial breaks an hour. Four stop sets. Uh, that is Angel. Angel, quick background. I know you, we've had you on the show before when we were on at nine and you've been doing your thing for a long time. Uh, well over almost 23,000 followers on Twitter alone. Angel Clark, you can find her at Sussex. That's two S's in the middle. E-X, Angel, and the letter C. That's uh, which county? Uh, obviously, Sussex, Sussex County. Uh, you lived here, there your whole life up there? Um, well, I, I switched back and forth between Sussex County and uh, and Wilmington, Delaware. But I've lived in Delaware my entire life. What made you decide you wanted to, uh, other than your your you know your tenacity and your intelligence and everything you wanted to bring to your broadcast? But uh, why a microphone and why a broadcaster? Why did you decide this? Well, you know, actually, I, I started out blogging and uh, I started getting kind of popular with the blogging. I was I was I was really enjoying it. And a local radio station, they they had someone. Uh, well, they they had to fire someone and. And they they knew that I had a pretty large following just just using my website and figured that they would give me a chance to, you know, try a radio show. And I tried it and absolutely loved it. And then I realized that I could do much better without them. So, yeah, that's that's usually how it works. Uh, uh, and Angel, how long uh, have you been doing this? Uh, blog included. Uh, blog started in 20, 2009, actually. Blog started in 2009, and radio show started in, I think, the 2011. So you've been uh, basically new media, as in New Media Monday, what we do here at Dangerous Conversation is really acknowledge all the people that are on the forefront of pushing conversation uh, outside the comfort zone of what the mainstream media of, uh, well, you know, the schmaltz they give you on a regular basis, and she does that as well as Alex. Alex, you started by running for office, right? Yeah, yeah. I started when I was running for office. They wouldn't give me any media time, so I I bought on a brokered station, yep. uh, which is a little bit different. But um, yeah, I bought on a brokered station, and uh, later on we brought Danielle in and, and Loring. And there's Rachel has been there over the time frame as well. Um, you know, Danielle for the longest has been. I'd say between me and Adrian, Danielle's been on the longest. Yeah, I've been. I think we're just under a year and a half that I've been with you guys. So I kind of started like maybe eight months after you guys started. Basically, started as a campaign manager for him. No, or a I, speechwriter. No, no, I was like the proofreader. In she was the, the campaign. midnight proofer. She was yeah. the brains. She was the brains. Admit it. Um, well, not in the beginning, no. But that's probably why we didn't do as well. <laughs> <laughs> So 1787 Radio Network is another one. They're joining us, uh, Angel, here in the studio. I, I, I'll, I'll throw it to uh, you first, Angel. Uh, the NSA story, and Alex even said this walking in, and I've heard this word a lot amongst our so-called conspiracy-minded broadcasters, that not everything is a conspiracy and that it's, it's being used as a word that they fling at us, Angel. But the word vindication is starting to roll around more and more and more. Every time there's a, another big blowout, whether it's the IRS or in this case, the NSA, uh, it seems like more and more people are waking up. I, I think that vindication 
is the wrong word for it because I, you know what? I've seen so much of people saying, well, you know, now, now you're getting upset. What about when Bush did it? Well, you know, when, when Bush did it, I was in high school uh, and, and didn't really know what was going on at all. But uh, the thing is, is that what I'm seeing is First, the left was outraged. Now the right is outraged. And what we need to do is we need to get them outraged together. When it comes to the concept of, of vindication and, and conspiracy theories, uh, I mean, the thing is, is that last month it was a conspiracy theory to think that the IRS was targeting conservative groups. This month, uh, you know, we're, we're finding out that uh, it's not only was it not a conspiracy theory, but we're also finding out that the NSA has been keeping track of phone calls using Verizon. And it's not just Verizon, right? People are saying, oh, well, it's just Verizon. No, it's if it's Verizon, then it's it's everyone else, too. Verizon is, is, you know, they're just the ones that we found out about. But so people are people are saying, well, you know, it, it feels good now to have you recognize that this is truth. And in, instead of doing that, I think we need to focus on. All right. So now you're outraged and let's move forward and do something with that outrage. Well, I think uh, you have to permeate the consciousness, Danielle. And, you know, you can yell and scream at people and say, you know, 1984 didn't happen incrementally. These things have started basically since 9-11. Uh, you know, Patriot X, the big one. And then, you know, TSA and, and DHS, those are two giant, giant organisms that grew out yeah. of one day. And, you know, here we are 12 years later. And now we're seeing the NSA popping up and we're hearing about Utah and the giant storage capacity of their new building. And now we're having whistleblowers be treated like, uh, like terrorists, if you will. Well, I, I mean, they're just doing so much. I mean, and, and we were talking about this earlier before we came in. It's almost hard to keep track of all the scandals at this point because there's so many. But as much as, you know, the whistleblowers are being, I mean, they really are being treated like a terrorist by our government, but they're, be they're being treated like heroes by just the everyday person as well. So you do get both of them, but it takes so much I mean, what bravery to come forward knowing that you're going to be a target for the rest of your life and that most people in the country aren't going to believe you, but you're still going to come forward and do what's right just because it's right. And, and that takes a lot of bravery. And that is why, you know, people like us will look at that person as a hero. And that's an inner voice. And uh, if you don't have it, that's not, you know, Alex, that's what's going to motivate that guy to take a $200,000 cushy, you know, NSA job and flush it down a crapper. And, you know, who knows, be targeted. Who knows what will happen to this young guy? Because he said, I do not want to be part of what the United States government and its agencies are doing to its own people. I don't want to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, I would say that there is a hint of vindication that is within there where you do feel vindicated a little bit. But I think that to, to um, I'm, I'm, I'm Angel. Angel, Angel, to, to yeah. Angel's point, though, what are you going to do with this information is actually the greatest yes. question mm -hmm. that yes. you could ever ask anybody. Is that what are you going to do about this? And And more importantly than that. I think we also have to take this to look at to realize that it wasn't either a left or a right problem is that this was started under the Bush administration. There's no getting around that. That's exactly what had happened is that the the, the initial structure was set in place by the Bush administration. And then when the Obama administration got in there, they went and doubled down on it. The reason this guy actually ended up coming out was is that he thought that it was going to get better and it ended up getting worse. And so he mm -hmm. had to make a decision on w before it was too late. Well, he fell for hope and change like a lot of people on on the left that were already right at the uh, angry at the neocons, thinking the neocons were responsible for everything that was taking place. Yeah. Then we now have, you know, Obama in office. And now the right is now suddenly talking about the Fourth Amendment. And I'm like, wait a minute. Where did you, when did you care about the Fourth Amendment when the Patriot Act was passed? Why, why didn't, why were you up in arms then? And that's the argument on the left. It's, it's, that's, that's the left right paradigm. They get, they get you wrong. They get you mad at the wrong people. They get you mad at each other rather than the people that are doing this to you, Angel. And I think it's a great way to put it. What are you going to do with this? Now, <clears throat> does that mean, here's an example. Do we take some of what we've now learned over the last couple of years about things like Echelon and Prism and, we go back and we show them with the, you know, the Nazis and the brown shirts and, you know, show the samples side by side and say, this is what happened first. The Enabling Act. Ooh, the Patriot Act. Show the timeline of things happening and maybe, Angel, use it as an educational device. You know, I, I think that that's a that's a fantastic idea because I, I think that what's important is pointing out to people that, uh, you know, I always use the example, you know, if if. Your mother beats you and then your father beats you 
it, it doesn't make it okay because both parents are beating you. And that's the situation that we're in right now. We have we have both sides beating the crap out of us. And all these people just, just completely ignore it. And they justify it because it's happening uh, from, from the other part.